Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in Lent. We worship as we live in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As has been our custom through Lent, our prayer of the day comes from our devotional booklet. Let us pray. God of wonder and delight, help us notice your playful, joyful presence today and throughout this week. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who is from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is a very important moment in the Gospel of John. Jesus has just entered Jerusalem to shouts of Hosanna, the very same ones that we will shout just one week from today. And this is the last time that Jesus teaches publicly. And in it, he declares his intentions. The hour has come, he says, for the Son of Man to be glorified, very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. We're told that Jesus is feeling the weight of it all. He's surrounded by friends, followers, people he loves. And he is acutely aware that his time is limited. Later on, he will spend quite some time in a room with the disciples <clears throat> saying a lot more in order to prepare them for his impending absence. But for now, he explains what will happen with a metaphor that can hardly be misunderstood. When someone we love dies, we lay their body to rest in the earth. It is, after all, the way of things. We began our Lenten journey with the words, ashes to ashes, 
dust to dust, right? Jesus expertly plays with this image and effectively foretells what will happen to him. For while we do lay bodies to rest in the earth, there are other things that we bury as well. Things like seeds. However, when we bury a seed, its death also represents the beginning of its rebirth. Because the seed indeed is lost. But out of it, a new plant grows. One that will produce much fruit, and indeed, more seeds. Jesus is constantly reframing things for us. Burying something is death, right? Wrong. Burying something brings new life. How much you love is based on your merits, right? Wrong. God loves everyone. No merits considered. Jesus dies just for the believers, right? No. Jesus lifted up is for everyone. He says, I will bring all people to myself. Indeed, it wasn't just Jesus' death that turned things upside down, but his life too. And it is this topsy-turvy way of thinking, way of Jesus, that Emily Dickinson plays with in the first poem that we read this week. An instant's play, she says. She talks of God, a fond ambush. Going so far as to even refer to Jesus' death and then what comes after as a jest. It is that kind of embracing of God's playfulness and use of surprise that fosters Holy Humor Sunday, which we celebrate the week after Easter. If our God was a God who played only by our rules, well, then Jesus wouldn't have called fishermen to be his disciples. He certainly wouldn't have eaten with all the wrong people or hung out with the people who lived outside of the city gates. If Jesus played by our rules, he wouldn't have attracted the kind of attention it got him hung on a cross. And certainly, he would have stayed in a grave. But that, that is not our God. Instead, our God seems to feel most comfortable dwelling on the margins, living in paradox, constantly surprising us. And while that seems to make a lot of humans rather uncomfortable. I believe with every part of me that that is the best possible scenario for us. Because if Jesus had chosen to operate within more common human boundaries, he would never have shown us so clearly what love and grace and forgiveness look like. If God chose to operate by human rules, then I'm afraid we would just have news instead of good news. What makes the gospel the gospel is that God does not operate within human rules of engagement. In God's operating system, the death of a seed means the growth of a tree. 
An ending becomes a beginning. Death becomes life. Very truly, I tell you. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Jesus is telling the crowd what's to come. And even though for a short while, things will look a lot like death, that will not be the end of the story. Next Sunday, the shouts of Hosanna, save us, those will be our shouts. We too will be looking to Jesus as we so often do, to do something radical, to upset the order of things. And of course, that is exactly what he will do. Just not in the way that we expect it. So we need to hold on to this seed image as we set out through the next two weeks. May we remember that when God is in the midst of it, things are often not as they appear. Death will not be the final answer. Death will not win. In the great mystery and beauty of the Son of God, life will prevail and love will conquer. May it ever be so. constantly surprise us, always arriving in unexpected ways. Where we judge, you love. Where we see death, you bring life. 
Remind us today and throughout our lives that death is a pathway to new life and that planting seeds is an act of faith. May we sow endless seeds, trusting in you, and may we never stop being amazed at the growth you bring. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to mighty thunder. You fill it with your presence and you call on us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds and protect all from storms, flooding and wildfires. You promise to write the law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. And give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. We pray for the people in and near Atlanta as they grieve the murder of eight members of their community. And we pray for our siblings of Asian descent who are experiencing drastic and deeply troubling increases in discrimination and acts of aggression due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On this, the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, we pray for hearts and minds to be filled with a desire for equity, equality, justice, and love as we seek an end to all that divides us. You sustain us with your spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying and all who grieve. We pray especially this day for Adolf, Christy, Luke, Helen, Wally, Jan, Luke, Bob, Andra, Margaret, Ella, Peter, and those we name before you. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and in death. Empower each of us in our own discipleship. Equip our children and our leaders. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to find comfort in the unexpected ways that you choose to lead and love us. We give thanks for the members of our congregation who serve you and the church in leadership. We give thanks for Jane, our council chair, for Lisa, our vice chair, for Jackie, our secretary, and for all the members of council. Brenda, Graham, Dave G, Dave H, Krista, and Helen. As these members promise to live in faith lead by example, and humbly serve. Bless them and their intentions. Equip them for the work to which they have been called. Give them eyes to see your path and ears to listen for your word. May their work shine a light on your grace and be evidence of your mission to love and save the world. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have taught us words to voice our praise. As with all the saints who have gone before us, bring us also to life everlasting and to the fullness of your grace and peace. 
we entrust all of our prayers and indeed ourselves to you, faithful God, in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.